Welcome back to the Weekly Cup. I'm Eric Banghart, Global Sales Manager for Innovonics, and welcome to the ninth edition of our Weekly Cup series. This week, we'll hook you up on how Innovonics commonly gets used with access control systems, and also share how you can connect to building automation systems utilizing our new EN4080 IP gateway with BACnet capability. Today, we look forward to one of our newest members of the Innovonics sales team, Bob Mendenhall, to dazzle us with his presentation. Bob covers our South Central Territory and resides in the Houston area. He has a vast knowledge of the security industry through his experience as an end user and positions with esteemed national integrator, JCI. Please forward your comments and questions throughout the presentation and we'll tackle in the Q&A. Please also keep an eye out for poll questions. Bob, the screen is yours, take it away. Thank you very much, Eric, and welcome everybody to the Innovonics Weekly Cup. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how we apply uh, the Innovonics 900 megahertz wireless solution to access control and HVAC applications. We'll start off with access control, but first, Nikki, do we uh, have a poll question? We do. Let me go ahead and pop that up for you, Bob. All right, so our first poll question for today is what category of systems does your company deploy right now? So if you could go ahead and um, give us your feedback, that might help Bob through his presentation. Let's see, they're still coming in, Bob, so I'm gonna give them a minute. Okay. All right, okay. I think we've got mostly everybody is just slowing down. So let me go ahead and end our polling and I'll share the results. Um, so everybody should be able to see the results. And then Bob, do you see those results? I do. That's uh, that's, it looks like we've got a lot of uh, building automation folks on. Oh, that's great. We got a little bit of both, huh? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I'll go ahead and take this down. Thanks. So we'll start off with access control. This is a pretty typical uh, access control application. Uh, we're trying to monitor the status of an uncontrolled door or maybe create an alarm condition on an overhead door or a roof hatch. Uh, typically that's done uh, by hardwiring to the opening. Uh, there's a considerable amount of cost that's associated with that, not just the cabling, but the uh, the uh, labor that's associated as well as the uh, installation material. In this image you'll see a recessed door contact and it's wired to the, an EN1210 universal transmitter. It doesn't have to be a recessed contact, it can be a surface mount contact, um, overhead door contact, a roof hatch, and now we've saved the building owner a considerable amount of money and uh, addressed the application. These are our three universal receivers. All three of these receivers have Form C relay outputs, and they can be connected to any access control hardware platform. So now we've chosen our receiver. We have it wired to the uh, available inputs on the access control hardware. So now we can monitor the status of that uncontrolled opening. Uh, we can be alerted to a prop door. We can be alerted to a for, uh, force door. Um, we can initiate lockdowns and we still maintain an audit trail. Everything that we can do with a hardwired door. This is our EN5040T wireless repeater. Uh, depending on the size of your installation, you may need one, you may need several of these repeaters. Uh, this repeater requires no home run wiring supports multiple repeater hops, uh, can be used in a large campus uh, application, a high-rise application. Uh, it has a power supply, that's the dash T. So basically what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna apply power to it and it comes with a 24 hour backup battery. Now we can facilitate communications from those end devices, the transmitters to the receiver. These are some of our access control integrations. Um, 
RS2 technologies, open options, the uh, ICT protege, that's GX and WX, and then the Genetech Security Center. You'll see several part numbers here for area control gateways, um, serial receivers, IP gateways, and we'll get into a little bit more detail on some of those in, on some future slides. These are the two serial receivers, the EN4000 and the EN4200. Both of these receivers uh, connect to the head end via an RS-232 serial interface. Uh, the EN4000 is typically used uh, when uh, we want to transmit some very specific data like pulse counting. Uh, the EN4200 is a security only receiver. This is the EN6080 area control gateway. Uh, this particular gateway allows software developers to easily integrate it into their applications, uh, TCP IP on a local area network, and uh, there is an available API. Uh, some of our universal transmitters, you saw the 1210 in that very first slide, the uh, universal. Uh, there's also a dual input version of that, the EN1212. That particular uh, transmitter is used, say, if we've got a, a set of double doors and we want those doors to report independently. There's also a, a long range version of that, the EN1252. Some of our panic alarm pendants, a lot of part numbers there. Those part numbers that are ending in S, that's a single button. The part numbers that are ending in D, that's a double button. We typically see those being used when we're trying to minimize accidental activations. Um, and then there's uh, several multi-condition pendants. Um, those pendants allow us to perform several functions with the uh, same uh, pendant. I recommend that uh, if you're not sure which pendant to use, contact your Innovonics representative and they'll uh, help you work through that. We also have a lot of information about those pendants on our website. So we're going to switch gears now and talk about building automation, but uh, Nikki, do we have another poll question? We do. Let me go ahead and put it up here. All right. So next poll question is what brand of BMS systems do you work with currently? So if you guys could take a moment and maybe just let us know. Oh, perfect. It's coming in. All right. We're almost there. Okay. It looks like we're slowing down on the votes here, so I'll go ahead and end it. All right. Can you see that, Bob? I can. Yeah, it looks like none is the most popular at 50%. <laughs> yeah, <see that. laughs> All right. Okay, I'll go ahead and take this down then. Thanks, everybody. So, Innovonics and uh, building management, uh, the building management systems uh, and other systems like physical security are converging. So, Innovonics has an EN4080 that can be licensed for BACnet. Um, BACnet is, an, is a uh, communications protocol that's used by building automation systems. Uh, these uh, systems, uh, we, we can take those 900 megahertz end devices and uh, convert them to BACnet, bring them into the building, autom uh, building automation uh, head end, things like uh, security devices for life safety, Temperature and humidity transfer uh, transmitters are pretty typical. The EN4080 uh, gateway for BACnet, uh, it has an option for uh, power over Ethernet. Um, it comes licensed two different ways uh, and it has to be ordered that way. Uh, the BACnet license, there's a charge for that, a one-time charge from that for that. It's true BACnet. And uh, it's compatible with uh, uh, Innovonics environmental transmitters um, and some select security transmitters. All that uh, information is on the website. 
And again, I recommend that, uh, especially if you don't have any experience with BACnet, that you get in touch with your regional representative. There's gonna be some development time that's involved in, the, in deploying this gateway, and they can help you out with that. So some uh, building automation application ideas, uh, alarms from cogeneration plants, uh, data centers, IT closets, cold storage, that's temperature, uh, EN 1752 temperature transmitter, uh, water detection, that's a big one. Water can do a considerable amount of damage. So the sooner we can detect that and, and get that situation resolved, the better. Uh, you can deploy the uh, EN 1751 water detector in that particular application. Uh, some other ideas, HVAC uh, equipment trouble, uh, lab equipment trouble, uh, space occupancy sensing. Uh, that can be something as simple as uh, uh, putting a motion detector in a space to turn lights on and off. Um, energy savings as it relates to uh, heating and cooling. And then with uh, folks returning back to work after the uh, quarantine, um, you could uh, um, deploy uh, the uh, pulse counter, the EN 1501 pulse counter, pair that up with the EN 4000 serial receiver, and uh, we can do some people counting. I'd like to thank you for attending the Innovonics Weekly Cup today, and don't forget to register for next week's Weekly Cup. Thank you very much. Great, thanks so much, Bob. Um, I am going to go ahead and start combing through these questions. You did have a few questions come in throughout your presentation. Um, if you want to go ahead and take your PowerPoint down, that would be great. Thank you. And then first question for you. Um, how do you calculate how many repeaters you need for a job? We have a, we have a survey kit, the EN 7017 survey kit. Uh, I recommend that everybody has at least one of those. That's a great tool for your tool belt. It's going to take a lot of the guesswork out of, uh, uh, of determining how many repeaters you're going to need for a product. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, how are the repeaters supervised within the system? I'm sorry, Nikki, could you repeat the question? Oh, sorry, did I break up there? Um, okay, the next question was, how are the repeaters supervised within the system? Uh, supervision is accomplished by um, the uh, repeaters. Um, all the repeaters receive every signal uh, from transmitters that are within their range. Uh, so if a uh, if there's a trouble on a on a uh, repeater, uh, you'll be notified of that, and then one of the other repeaters will pick up that signal and send it to the receiver. Okay, great. Um, next question: uh, What is the number of devices transmitters that a 4080 gateway can support? You know, I'm not sure that what the answer to that question is. Uh, I can get, I can find out for you though and get back. Eric, okay. are, are you familiar with that count? Um, I, I don't have an exact count on that and it's a little bit variable as I recall, uh, especially in the BACnet protocol. Um, I, I think there's a soft limit of around um, 100 if I, if I recall but I think you can easily extend that. It kind of depends on which transmitters you're using. Some of them um, you know, may affect the, the limits, but uh, generally I think around 100, but it can go up to several hundred. Okay, great. And Mario, I'll make sure I pass along your information so the guys can follow up with you. You're a little yeah, bit- Yeah, I'd like to follow up on that uh, supervision question. I'll send them a data sheet. Okay, no problem. All right, next question. Can you connect Innovonics transmitters to Linnell? Yes, uh, you'll use the uh, EN4232MR uh, universal receiver and it'll connect to the uh, MR16 uh, mercury board. Okay, great. And it looks like we only have one more question. 
Um, and if anybody else has more questions, go ahead and use that chat box or the Q&A box. Or also you can, you can raise your hand. There's a little icon to raise your hand if you wanted to um, verbally ask your question. Um, all right, let's see. So the next question, Bob, is how to configure, how do you configure the EN4080 for a BACnet system? Uh, there is a, there is a, uh, a utility, it's a thumb drive actually, that plugs into that EN4080 and that's how it's configured. There's a video of how to configure that uh, EN4080 on our website. Okay, gotcha. Um, next question, can data be sent directly to AWS for your hardware? Uh, that's a cloud question, I believe. AWS? Yeah, so there's two, there are two license options with the EN4080. You know, you've yeah. got the BACnet protocol, um, which is one license, and you've also got MQTT, which is more of a, a cloud. Most of the cloud providers uh, utilize that common uh, protocol. And the MQTT, there's more information on our website, or I, I would suggest reaching out to a uh, one of our territory sales representatives. This is a newer device. We're not as familiar. Uh, Bob's a little bit newer and, you know, I'm just a manager. I don't know that much. So, um, oh, come on. But anyway, please reach out to us. We'll get you the technical specifications and there's much more information on our website. Okay, great. And then I don't think we have any more questions, but we did get some feedback um, just saying that they didn't really understand what BMS was. And um, halfway through the presentation, before I knew uh, what BMS was, but I already responded to the poll question. Don't worry about that, that's okay. We were just looking for live poll question feedback. No big deal, but if you would like to share your name, I know it was posted anonymously. Um, we'd also be happy to follow up with you on your projects and maybe go into a little bit more detail about BMS. So. Um, and also you can always mes message us later. You'll see a follow-up email after this if you want to just click reply to if that's it. And in general, we just, we use building automation and BMS and BAS all kind of interchangeably. So those are all, you know, common systems there. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. I don't have any hands raised. I don't have any more questions. But before I pass it off to Eric to announce our winners for this morning, I did want to share a link with you. Um, I just put it in the chat feature for you all, but we do have a bonus in Avonix Weekly Cup tomorrow morning. Um, Bosch will be discussing how to sell intrusion into commercial applications. So I, I just put the little registration link if you'd like to join us tomorrow morning. And then uh, just a little reminder is we actually will not have an Innovonics Weekly Cup next week. Um, our assumption just being that um, with 4th of July, maybe folks will take a long weekend. So we don't have one planned for next Tuesday, but we will be back to it um, following. And we actually do have uh, new speakers booked for July. I'm going to announce all of July and early August later today on LinkedIn and our social media. So keep an eye. We, we really appreciate you coming to all these. Uh, so with that, Eric, do you want to go ahead and uh, share your closing words and our sure. winners? <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Nikki, to the uh, hardest working virtual producer in the business. She uh, does an excellent <laughs> job with us. And uh, thank you, Bob, an excellent look at how we have kind of extended our reach and our partners' capabilities to connect with access control and building automation systems. Uh, don't forget to reach out to those territory sales managers for additional details and see how we can help you connect to a broad array of head-end controller applications. So lastly, here are the weekly winners of the coffee gift cards for signing up or attending the presentation today. Scott Rankert with Entech. Morgan McCarl with JCI, and Chris Lamb with Alltech Systems. Uh, congrats to all and thanks for attending this week. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you next two weeks from now, I guess. Yeah, Cheers. yeah. Take care. <laughs>